Hey guys, uh, great to be back with you all again today. We're going to be talking about problem solving today. And we're going to be talking about a, a wide variety of skills, really. Uh, we're going to be talking about 3.4a and k, and 3.5a and b. And that's problem solving with all operations, basically what it is. And um, the I can statements is uh, I can choose the correct operation to solve a word problem, and I can use the correct strategies to solve uh, to, pro to problem solve. So uh, we're going to look at some of the vocabulary. Uh, since we're using all operations, that would be addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Those are the four operations we use uh, in math. And uh, we have uh, for uh, addition, we have add in uh, are the two numbers we put together to get our sum, which is our answer. And minuend and subtra subtrahend uh, and difference. Uh, difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. Uh, there's a community property of addition. That means I can switch the numbers around and still get the same sum. Uh, that's not a fact with subtraction, though. Uh, there's specific order. We always start with a larger number in third grade and take away a smaller number from that to get a, to get a whole number or a positive number. Uh, multiplication vocabulary. You know, it's factor, factor, those two numbers we put together in our multiplication to get our product. And there's a community property of multiplication, which means we can switch numbers around. Five times four is also 20. And uh, division vocabulary, uh, dividend, divisor, quotient. Quotient's the answer to, to a division problem. And uh, we cannot switch around. I cannot say that five divided by 40 equals eight. That would not be a true statement. So there's a specific order way we uh, divide things, just like subtraction. They're very similar. I uh, have a few videos we're going to watch um, uh, about, uh, about these skills. Uh, we'll watch one of Aaron's videos talking about how to solve uh, problems using different operations and stuff. So let's go ahead and get ready for those videos. Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we are looking at the third grade concept of representing multiplication and division. This is the standard 3.5b in the great state of Texas, and we're looking at number 14 of the 2016 released STAR test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, and then unpause it and we will look at our answers together. So we have an interesting problem here because if you look at our answer selections, F, G, H, and J, we're not actually looking for a number. We're looking for a representation or a diagram is what they call it here. So let's see if we can figure this out. Edward made a total of, or made 26 hamburgers. He used a total of 78 pickle slices on the hamburgers. Then he put the same number of pickle slices on each. So let's see if we can draw a picture of this. I'm not gonna draw 26 hamburgers or 78 pickle slices, but just so we can kind of get our brains wrapped around it. So I'm just going to draw I'm just going to do like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is 26. If I wanted to, I could draw 26 individual circles, but I'm not really going to do the, the problem like that. And then we've got more pickles, so I'm just going to kind of do like this. So we've got a whole lot of mess of pickles. And I'll say this whole thing is 78. And what we're doing is we're putting the pickle slices onto the tomatoes or onto the hamburgers. But what we need to know is we need to have a, a representation in our brains of what's going on to what. So we've got the pickle slices going on to the hamburgers. Here's the key. We've got the same number of pickle slices on each hamburger. So when we're looking at same number, when we are looking at sometimes they might use the term equal groups, or maybe they'll just say uh, same amount. All of these are going to be your big clue that we are looking at this down here, multiplication and division. Whenever we get into same number, equal groups, same amount, that is your clue that we are looking at multiplication and division. So when we are looking at strip diagrams, and that's what these are down here, so let me just write that. These are called strip diagrams. You might be familiar with these uh, as part-part holes, and a part-part hole is one 
kind of strip diagram. There are a few others. Um, but as you can see, these do kind of look like part part holes. And in these cases, they actually put the total down on the bottom. Um, and it's this line right here, kind of like what I drew over on the side. That's the total. Sometimes you'll see it on the top. Either way, what we have is we have a total, we only have two numbers, 78 and 26. And then how are we going to, how are we going to split them up or how are we going to represent them? Well, your total is always going to be this big number. So let me just put that right down here. So 78, that's the total number of pickle slices we have. And we are going to divide them up. We are going to split them up, separate them up into equal groups based on hamburgers. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to put 78 on 26 hamburgers. And I'm not going to count them, but let's just pretend I put 26 little hamburgers down there. And as you can see, that's what F is right here. Now they flipped the total down to the bottom, but we have 26 little question marks. And what we're looking at is how many pickles go in each. We don't even need to know the answer to this, but this F is going to be 78 divided by 26. And that's what we're looking for. What we have here in G is we've got 26 and we've got, it's divided by three, but we're not dividing up the hamburgers. We're dividing the pickle slices. And this equation doesn't even use the 78 pickle slices. I don't know where the three comes up. Here we have, um, equals 78. So this is more of an addition. So we're trying to add 26 and 78, and that's going to get us to our total. We're not adding the pickle slices and the hamburgers. We need to divide the pickle slices into the hamburgers. So that gets us the wrong operation. And then 78 minus or equals 26 plus this mystery number. That's also an addition or subtraction problem. Not what we're looking for. We're dividing the pickles onto the hamburger, so our answer is going to be F. Okay, uh, go and follow along as I read this problem right here. It says, Andy has 12 flowers to plant. Find at least five different ways he can plant the flowers. Each row must have the same number of flowers, and all the flowers must be planted. Draw at least three arrays, three different arrays, that show how the flowers can be planted. And uh, we'll go and do it all the ways. Uh, that's not too hard. That's something we would have done earlier in the year. Uh, pretty easy skill to do. So uh, I'm gonna make my flowers yellow. And the first array I'm gonna make, I'm gonna put them all in one row. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. <clears throat> that's one way of doing it. I know that 12 is an even number, so I could put them in two equal rows and they'll have the same amount in each row. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, um, I know that uh, three times four is 12, so I, mean, I can make three rows of four that will work. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I did it three ways. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, well, I can do it a fourth way at least. If three times four is 12, four times three would be 12 too. So that'd be four rows of three. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And uh, since I <clears throat> made two rows of six, that means I can make six rows of two. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And we can always uh, put them in 12 rows with one in each row because uh, we made one row of 12. Uh, you can always, uh, uh, that's uh, even prime numbers we can do that with. So uh, I'm going to have one in each row. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So uh, we'll see how many different ways we did this. There's one way right there. That's two ways we arrange the flowers. Three, four, five, and there's six different ways we arrange the flowers. Okay, go and follow along as we uh, work on this problem together. It says Jessica has four times as many rabbits as Neil. Neil has twice as many rabbits as Nancy, and Nancy has three rabbits. How many rabbits does each person have? 
and it says to draw a strip diagram that shows how many rabbits each person has. And then we have a question right here, how many rabbits would Jessica have if Nancy has two rabbits? So I'm gonna cube this, there's a lot of information here. So just to help us organize it. Um, right here, say four times as many rabbits as Neil and twice as many rabbits as Nancy and Nancy has three rabbits. And uh, that's the stuff I could uh, use to solve the problem. And then we have in this uh, question down here, uh, we're going to go through a different scenario. Why if uh, Nancy has two rabbits instead of three rabbits, how many rabbits would Jessica have in that case? But um, that should be an, enough to uh, help us understand the question. Um, I'll underline the question that says, how many rabbits would Jessica have if Nancy had two rabbits? And uh, I'm also going to want to draw a strip diagram. I'm going to box in some operational clues. Okay, um, right here where it says times, that's uh, exactly what it says, means. Twice, that means times two. Um, each person, okay, that we're talking about some equal size groups right there. And um, that's most of the stuff. So I'm going to do some evaluating real quick. Okay, uh, I see times, it seems like a multiplication uh, problem, and it's asking me to use a strip diagram to solve. So we'll do a strip diagram. So I'm going to start with uh, what I know, and I like to do tables, really, to tell you the truth. I'm going to draw a table over here real quick. So I've got Jessica, i do that with a J. I've got Neil, I'll do an N-E for Neil, and uh, N-A for Nancy. Okay, and it says right here in the statement that Nancy has three rabbits. So that's an easy one. So I'll, I'll draw a strip diagram to show... Uh, and basically, um, you wouldn't have a strip diagram for Nancy because it says that she has three. But I would do a strip diagram for Neil. Neil has twice as many rabbits as Nancy. So Neil's strip, strip diagram, I'll put Neil. Um, so that's N-E-A-L. And his stri strip diagram would have two parts on it. And uh, each part would have three because he has twice as Nancy. So that means Neil would have six, or this whole area right here would be six. So he has six rabbits. So I'll put a six right here. And then I could do that. Uh, Jessica has four times as many rabbits as Neil. So Jessica Jessica is going to have four parts on her strip diagram. So I break that in half and I break each half in half. And she has four times as many as Neil, so that'd be six in each section. And six times four, uh, I know six times four is 24. That means she has 24 rabbits right here. So basically it's asking us to change, uh, change it right here. It says how many rabbits? would Jessica have if Nancy had two rabbits? So right here, she has three, but we're gonna change it to two. So she had two rabbits and Neil had twice as many, so that would be four. And if Jessica had four times as many, that'd be four times four. That means she would have 16 rabbits. So if she had two rabbits, that means Jessica would have 16 rabbits, but in actuality, she has 24 rabbits. Okay, we're gonna work on a guided practice problem here. Follow along as I read. Jesse has 60 party favors to give away at his birthday party. He has invited 12 friends. How many toys should he give each of his guests? So uh, I'm gonna cube this, just like I do all my problems, or most of them anyway. Um, there's 60 party favors. And uh, he invited 12 of his friends. And uh, that's most of the stuff that we need to know on this. And uh, I'm trying to find out how many toys. So I'm going to underline the question. How many toys should he give to each of his guests? I'm going to box in my operational clue. I see right here, I see each. That's usually talking about equal size groups. I'm evaluating. So I'm looking at all my, um, all my labels right there. Uh, I have 60 party favors. I have 12 friends. So... Um, Typically, I'm not going to 
um, and subtract toys and friends. Okay, if I have 60 party favors and 12 friends, I can't add those together and get um, 72 of something. Okay, it's still gonna have 60 party favors and I'm still gonna have 12 friends. Okay, so when my labels are different, a lot of times that seems like it's gonna be multiplication division. I also see right there, I see the each that I boxed in. That tells me it's equal size groups. And um, is my answer gonna be smaller or larger than 60? That's right, it's gonna be smaller because there's 60 total uh, party favors. So chances are I'm gonna do some division, okay? But before I do that, I'm gonna go use my get strategy. So click groups, each, and total. So how many groups are there in this problem? That's right, there are 12 groups because that that's the friends. Those are the ones that are getting the toys. How many are in each group? That's right, we don't know. Right here in my question, I see the each, and that's what I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to figure out how many each get. So I'm trying to find that out, and that's gonna be how much, how many toys each friend gets. Do I know the total? Yep, the total is the total amount of party favors, the tar total amount of toys. So what, um, what um, expression can I use to solve this? Yep, that's gonna be 60. Because I know my total, I'm talking about equal size groups, divided by 12. That's going to equal something. What multiplication fact could I use to help me solve this? That's right. 12 times something, 12 groups of something equals 60. So I could use that. That's a multiplication equation I could use to solve this. Okay. So one thing we could do is we could go ahead and plug in these numbers right here to my, uh, to my 12 times three, I could do 12 times five, 12 times six, and 12 times 12, and that'd be one way to solve it. So let's try that. Uh, what is 12 times three? That's all right, 12 times three is 36. So that would not be one way to solve it. What is 12 times five. Okay, yeah, that looks like 12 times five is 60. So I think that may be my answer. What is 12 times six? Okay, 12 times six is 72. And what is 12 times 12? Yeah, 12 times 12 is 144. So I'm pretty sure it's B, So, we're, but we're gonna do something different. Uh, we're gonna do something else. We're gonna use a strip diagram to help us solve this. So I'm gonna draw a strip diagram right here. Kind of an ugly one, I guess, huh? And on this, the total distance is gonna be 60. I'm gonna break it into 12 equal groups. I'm gonna try to anyway. So 12 is an even number. So I can break that in half, and that means I'd have six on each side. Six is an even number, so I can break each one of those in half. And that means I'd have to put uh, three, make three equal sections in, in here to make 12. So that's three there, three there, three there, and three there. Okay, and uh, typically uh, I would do this sort of similar to grouping. Let me double check, make sure I got 12 here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I did end up with 12, okay? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just double check uh, using my, uh, my answer that we said. We said it's five in each group, and I can go ahead and uh, draw five in each group. So that'd be five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and 60. And that does work. There is uh, five in each group, so my correct answer on this one, it will be five. You'll get five party favors to each friend. It's time to complete your independent practice. There'll be a blue puzzle piece after this video. Um, I'll also put a PDF in there that you can print out and do your uh, work with pencil and paper. 
Just make sure you do the blue puzzle piece. And if you have any questions, email your teacher or send them a message in Schoology. Best of luck to you.